This is the Tina 2S from WeFun, the 3D printing company. It's small, it's compact, and it was sent to me by WeFun to do a complete and honest review on. So that's exactly what you're gonna get. I was very surprised with not just this, but the whole community around 3D printing and how much stuff literally is out there, especially for our hobby in retro gaming and everything else. But first off, before we get to all that good stuff, let me show you this and uh, how it works and functions. The 3D filament or PLA comes on a spool, which sits very nicely on that hook there. So you hook it on, it feeds through here, goes through that tube and then comes out down here into the actual machine itself. Now, as you can see up here, these are the workings. There's the nozzle, the plastic comes through and depending on what you're printing, it will print on here. Now, what I like about this, once your print is complete, you simply do that and you pull this magnetized cover off and you can peel your design off. Very easy indeed. Now I've done a few prints with this to test it and put it through its paces and I have to say, it's done exactly what it's meant to do every single time. Let me show you how this can really help you with our, uh, our hobby of retro game collecting. We've now come over to the PC and we're gonna look at a website called Thingiverse. It's actually spelled a T H I N G I, not Y, okay, verse. Uh, and you go on there, it's dot com, and there's just loads and loads of printable files on here, and they're all free to download, okay? Um, so, what you do, you're on it now, as you can see, and this is the front page I come into, which is showing you sort of the latest designs and stuff on here. But obviously, we're looking at retro gaming today, so uh, let's do a search here, and uh, there is a particular file I'm looking for, and it's a ZX Spectrum um, amount. And the idea is I can then sort of clip to my, my spectrum to it and mount it on the wall. This is the one here, I believe. There's a few here. You've got one there, as you can see, that's got like a stand with it that comes out. But this one, I believe, is pretty much invisible to the wall. I oh, know it's not. There's a little bit poking out there. But um, so there's, as you can see, there's the two files left and right. Now, what I like about this design is it fits over the rubber feet. If your rubber feet, of course, are still on the ZX Spectrum and it, it screws into the existing screw holes on the Speccy itself. Uh, so I'm going to look at that one and I'm going to look to print this. OK, so the first thing we do, then we go to the um, the files there and it shows you it gives you a breakdown of what the files are and stuff. But I'm just going to download both them files. OK, you have to wait a few seconds while it shows you a bit of an advert because obviously this site has to pay for itself in some way or another. It's now downloaded that. OK, now just to give you a brief overview of other items you can look for. Um, so if you type in like Mario and do a search it'll give you like a load of different mario 3d prints like the, that that's cool that little plant pot there you know what i mean now also a lot with a lot of this stuff you can sort of print it and it print in one color and you can paint it if you if you put decent at painting like that you know so you can do all sorts so that gives you a good idea i mean that keychain there's pretty cool and the super mario main chomp and that little sd card holder for your switch games and stuff is also pretty awesome uh keychains there so as you can see, there's all sorts but if you look at the bottom here there's just pages and pages and pages of stuff so another thing i might look to do is um uh controller holders that sort of stuff for ps3 maybe let's just have a look ps3 controller let's see what we can find there oh i've spelt it wrong control alert yes we don't want the t on the end so ps3 controller as you can see here some stands here these look pretty cool because these can be mounted to the wall and they hold different systems so how does that work with that whole PS3 Mega Drive? Uh, yeah, we. That's pretty cool. Okay, so as you can see there, there's the actual print files itself and different designs, <coughs> excuse me, for different um, controllers, N64, etc. I just want a, I have little screw holes as well. You've got things like here, thumbstick extenders, there's all sorts. So you can imagine the, ah, there's a wall mount for PS3. Let's have a look at that one. Uh, a couple of little screws there. Now, obviously, I've got the wooden walls in the games room, so that will probably work very, very well. So I'm going to download that file. Download in three, two, one. You're back in the room, and there it is. It's downloaded. Obviously, you get them little five-second uh, inserts there because, obviously, the it has to pay for itself so that's thingiverse obviously it just goes on and on and on and equally if there's things you wanted like for example i wanted a um, utility box key 
you know, then once you have outside your house, sort of like a hex to, to access your, your meters and stuff. Uh, so utility key. Let's see if we can find one of those. There we go. Uh, there's something there. Come from a plastic bag, handle, utility. There it is. Utility key, four-way service key there, printable. That's a square one. Got different size there. So you get the idea. It's great for everyday items as well, okay? So another fine example. Now let's go over to the software and I'll show you how to make it a printable file and then we'll go and print it. I moved the camera to the other side so you can see the files we're working with. So these are the files we've downloaded. Now the first thing you need to do is just right click them, obviously I'm using Windows, uh, and extract all. And just extract them here in the, into the same folder. Okay, so that's that one done. As you can see, it then comes out and it shows you what's what there. I'm going to do the same as well for the ZX Spectrum brackets. So let's uh, extract all there. Great. Now the files are ready for printing in the software so let's go open the software and i'll show you how to drop it to the um, little sd card we'll get it back into the machine and we'll get them printed it's really simple we're now in the software this is called we builder this comes free with the product it's a download there's loads of tutorials there's stuff out there it's, but when i tell you it's simple to use it really is so all i do i simply go file uh, open so we've opened that folder and as you can see here, I've got PS3 wall mount there and the ZX Spectrum 48K wall mounts. We'll do these first. So you go files, uh, and obviously one will be left, one will be right. So I've opened this one. This is the right one. Identifiable by the... Oh! <laughs> and as you can see there, it's, that's the size of the plate you've got. Don't get me wrong, it's not the biggest plate in the world for 3D printing, but it, it's a good size. It does everything I want. Now, if you're wanting to resize that, it's very easy to do. But obviously, I'm not going to do that because it's already to scale for what we require. So, now all I'm going to do with that, you use this button here called Slice. You press Slice, and it then changes the file into sort of a... It makes it readable for the machine. And as you can see, it's going to put this print plate down and then print on top of that. I really like that because uh, my previous printer didn't have that, and trust me, it makes all the difference. Uh, anyway, go Save File, and I'm going to drop that onto the... Um, little sd card that i've got in the machine okay so i find me little sd card it's under we fun and i'm going to call it spectrum right and then save great and it is that simple now i'm going to do the same with the left file and all you do you just right click on the plate there on the image and you just go clear plate and then you repeat the same process. I've opened up the left file. As you can see there, identifiable by the L. <laughs> anyway, same thing again. I'm going to slice it. It's done its magic. And then I'm simply going to uh, drop that onto the, um, uh, save that file onto the same um, little memory stick. Uh, we fun. That's the one. And I'm going to call that Spectrum Left. And the reason I rename the files, it just makes them easier because as you're about to see, it lists them on the machine. It's saved. Let's go and get this added to the printer and let's get this printed. At the top of the printer now, got me little SD card. So we simply slot that in there. It clicks, as you heard. And then we press this button here. And we come into the screen. Now we're going to go down to the bottom option, which is print from TF. So we hit that. Now these are the files we just added. As we can see there, I've got spectrum left, spectrum right. Let's do left first. So I press that, and I'm going to press print. So we're on the settings now on the screen, and as you can see here, the nozzle has to get to a temperature of 150, so it's having to reduce, because I've just changed the filament, and uh, the bed has to get to 50 degrees. It's currently at 27, so it's setting up. Uh, so we're now going to set this to a time lapse, and we'll show this printing. The first printed item we're looking at here is this um, PS3 controller holder. Now with all the prints, as you can see, this is the base plate, it lays down very cleverly, it's very clever, and you peel off your print from the base plate, thus leaving you with the, uh, the item. So as you can see there, the screw holes, hope the camera's picking up, are uh, countersunk. Uh, but what I do with a lot of these 3D prints, Obviously, you get like these bits here, okay? You just pick off the excess like that. They come off quite easily. But what I use is a nail file from Mrs. OG's collection. And I'll just give it a little, little go on that. And it just cleans up the edges for you. 
don't get me wrong, you could go a bit more into all this and really make it good. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to quickly do this. Um, so there's a bit of excess there. Now let's go and put this against the wall and let's see. Let's screw it on and let's see how it holds the controller, shall we? Mounting the PS3 controller holder to the wall. And then we will show you the PS3 controller, hopefully sitting in there very snug indeed. Now, this is just one example of a 3D print and how it can assist us retro gamers in our everyday needs. So, oh, yes, indeed. There it is. One controller. Whack that on there, just like that. Look at that. <laughs> That's quality. Next up, we're looking at the Spectrum and these mounts. Uh, as you can see, they're both right and left, so let's get these off. A little bit of a clean up on these as well. As you see, when it comes to this stuff, it just sort of peels off that backing. It's very clever indeed. Actually, there's very little clean up in there, just round there. So that'll probably just pick off to be absolutely fair, which it is. So no clean up required on that one. So that can go there. And the same with this print here. And there we go. A little bit in the middle there, the same as the other one. Okay, and that is it. So as we can see on this print, it's showing sort of a little countersunk screw hole there and a counter screw, uh, countersunk screw hole this side. You've obviously got left and right. So let's flip this over and see how it's going to work. I like how they're designed, so that cuts out there, I think. And then we should be able to, once we get it in the right side, of course, put them screws back in place and these will fix back into the spectrum. And while we're looking at the spectrum, I printed these little fellows, of course, Jet Set Willy. Um, as you can see there, they're very small, but they printed up very nicely indeed. They're just, uh, and there's so much stuff on that thingiverse like this. And the surprising thing is there's just no charge for it. So this 3D printer, for us retro gamers, there's something for everyone. There really, really is. Look how useful the 3D printer's been for this. Now, I've just cleaned this up. Didn't take an awful lot. But look, it's printed it even with the grooves on and everything else to keep in line with the actual um, original Game Boy. Now, obviously, the colour match isn't great. But you know what? doesn't matter if you haven't got a battery compartment this is going to help you greatly so as you can see there it's got the the sliding bits in the bottom there so it sits quite snug push that down there give it a push and we've got ourselves a battery compartment for the game boy people oh yes batteries aren't going anywhere now but this is just shows how convenient these 3d printers are just a few examples there of how a 3D printer is useful to us retro game collectors. The mounting bracket for that Spectrum is particularly good. I'm hoping to find one for my ZX81. The controller for the PS3 is awesome. I'm gonna get some more for different controllers. So I'm just take them off the wall, use them in the different systems when I need to and they just look great. But of course, this comes into its own when you, something like that, you know what I mean? You can't get spares like this anymore. So just go on about a 3D print one in say 40, 50 minutes and just get that straight in there like that. It's just absolutely awesome, guys. So you've got yourself a cover as well. Anyway, let's go and give you my final thoughts on this printer overall. Let's summarize now the uh, Wii Fun Tina 2S. As I say, this was sent to me to give an honest review. This wasn't a paid review, it was sent, and I will give you my honest review. I have some experience of 3D printing. Probably about five, maybe six years ago, I bought a 3D printer. Um, bigger than this one, in quite an industrial looking thing, quite weighty. Um, and I'll be honest, after about six months of hassle, I gave up on 3D printing. Uh, the print bed and everything else you'd have to keep, you know, measuring it, using, to, oh, it was just, it was an absolute, it was horrendous to use. You'd start printing it, it'd fail, you'd get uh, this PLA spewing everywhere, trust me. So this, where it says it's sort of designed for uh, beginners and children and it works, guess what? It actually does. Me and the missus unpacked this and within 10 minutes, we had this up and running and printing. It was just so, so easy. And all we did, we didn't even use the app, which is very expansive, as you can see. There's just so much info on the app. But 
we just followed the steps in the book that come with it, step one, step two, step, and it was so simple. And within 10 minutes, as I say, we were printing our first print. It was just, it, was, it does what it says on the tin. It actually does. It was, and no messing about, no failing. It's just worked. Equally, look at it. It doesn't look industrial like a lot of the other 3D printers do. It's a sexy looking unit. You could sit this on any shelf or whatever and it just looks cool. It's a cool, vibrant colour there they've used with the orange in that. And it's not an ugly machine. It, it looks good. I've used different filament in it. I've changed filaments and stuff and it's all works. And it, I can't bang on enough about it, how, how good it is, honestly. Um, if I had to give you a negative, the negative would be the print plate size. Um, but... It's designed at beginners and, uh, and, and kids. As you saw there, the software is so easy to use. You can link a computer direct to this through the port in the side, and of course, just printing from the card, but not just that. If you've got kids and they want to print, you get your mobile phone via that app, and you simply link it via Bluetooth and using your home Wi-Fi, and you print files direct from your phone, wirelessly, straight to the machine. <laughs> it's... It surprised the hell out of me, this. These are under £200 that are available on Amazon. The product link is in the, uh, the description of the video and in the comments. It's just, it does everything it's meant to do and that little bit more. To say I'm, I'm truly, I'm sold on this product and I'm sold on this company. Uh, we Fun are a company I would definitely be keeping an eye out on. And to be honest, if they were to produce another printer similar to this, but on a slightly larger scale and kept that sexiness, I for one would definitely be investing. Um, it's just great. It does everything it's meant to. Can't bang on enough about it. I really, really can't. Um, so it's an amazing machine. So if you're looking for an entry level machine for uh, 3D printing, that is simple, easy to set up, easy to use. This, my friends, is it. I've been OG Duffy. Drop in the comments your experiences of 3D printing, if any. And uh, what did you think of the retro gaming stuff that I showed you? And bear in mind, I only showed you a brief amount. I'm really surprised. But like I say, with them control holders and the mounts and all that, I'm going to be going a bit mad, I think. I think I'm going to have all sorts of sort of controllers and that planted all over the wall. It's just for convenience. But this comes into its own i absolutely love it i've been i know i'm really gushing about this but rightly so four weeks hasn't failed once doing everything it should do and more it's brilliant so we fun tina 2s thank you very much what a machine i've been og duffy you guys have been awesome as always and this beer is for this 3d printer yes it is chin chin happy days we fun see you all on the next one guys and girls laters